We do have a quorum if you'd like to begin the meeting. All right, thank you. Good afternoon, members of the MAG Active Transportation Committee. Welcome to the October 18th, 2022 meeting. As a reminder, please turn your microphone on and clear, clearly state your name before speaking to ensure that members of the audience can hear you. And please mute your mics when not speaking to eliminate any um, background noise. Because this is a virtual meeting, a roll call vote will be taken for each action item on the agenda. As a reminder, phone only attendees will need to press star six to unmute yourselves. And we will now begin the meeting with a roll call of all members. Thank you, Chair. I'll begin roll call. Grant Anderson. Here. Thank you. Marielle Brown. Here. Stephen Chang. Here. Chair Conclu. Here. Jason Crampton. Stephen Esther. Here. Thank you. Allison Feliz. Here. Thank you. Brandon Forey. Here. Thank you. Tiffany Halperin. Nina Arendo for Tara Harmon. Jason Harris. Jim Johansson. Reed Kempton. Here. Thank you. Elaine Mariol for Clem Lagaki. Yes, uh, here. Thank you. Daniel Loftus. Jose Macias. Present. Thank you. Christine McMurdy. I'm here. Thank you. Mark Millstone. Here. Thank you. Randy Proach. Here. Thank you. Earl Ratledge. Here. Thank you. Patrick Sage. Here. Kelsey Shatnick. Here. Uh, Ward Stanford. Garrett Topham. Here. Thank you. Justin Weldy. Present. Thank you. Nathan Williams. Here. Thank you. And I believe Chase Wallman is here for Robert Yabez here thank you thank you and is there anyone here that i missed okay this is jason harris town paradise valley i was a little late thank you very much this is and nina arredondo with pinnell county i'm proxy for tara Harmon. thank you anybody else thank you chair that concludes roll call all right, thank you. Item number two, call to the audience. An opportunity for public comment on the agenda was provided ahead of the meeting. MAG staff, have we received any public comments? Chair, we did receive one comment uh, through MAG's website uh, from Katie Bolajitz from Tempe, Arizona. Okay. And I can read the comment. I'm writing today about the CME-AZ program and its problems. First, it proposes that safety is everyone's responsibility, but the responsibility should be on those with the most power, the drivers. High vis or helmets won't save lives if the driver is speeding or distracted. Second, the website's word choices are subpar and passive. The section on bicycle and pedestrian crashes has no mention of cars, but they should be mentioned because crashes almost always involve cars. They aren't accidents, they can be prevented. Words matter. Third, local governments have to do more for road safety beyond education. The National Institute for Occupational Health and Safety proposes a hierarchy of controls, which provides guidance on which solutions should be prioritized to reduce risks posed by a hazard. 
The top most effective is elimination of the hazard, such as banning cars on certain or at certain times. Next is substitution, namely replacing car trips with safer public transit. Third is engineering controls, which includes protected bikeways and leading pedestrian walk signals. Fourth is administrative controls like educational campaigns and regulations. Finally, the lowest, least effective is PPE, which includes high vis and helmets. Governments have focused more on the bottom, less effective solutions at the expense of the higher, more effective solutions. Educational campaigns like this one are one of the lowest levels. What will save lives is lower speed limits, narrower and fewer lanes, more protected and dedicated bike lanes, and more street crossings with lights, not posters and signs. Finally, how the plan will be enforced should be clearly stated and include automated enforcement. Vision Zero Network considers automated speed for safety cameras to be more effective in improving traffic, traffic safety than a traditional officer-led approach. Automated programs can and should be constructed to significantly lessen opportunities for racial and other biases and to also lessen the inequities within financial penalties. And that concludes the statement. Thank you. And you said it was the one comment. We haven't received any others. No, no other comments were received. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Item number three, transportation staff report. K Bork, Transportation Planning Project Manager, will provide a report to the excuse me, Active Transportation Committee. Thank you, Chair. I have two announcements. Uh, in recent years, there's been a, a decline in funding requests. Uh, for technical assistance for the non-infrastructure Safe Routes to School projects. And MAG staff is seeking input from member agency staff who work with the schools on the MAG Safe Routes to School programs. Uh, an email we, will be sent out from myself or from Margaret Herrera to members of the Active Transportation Committee, and we are seeking your input to help MAG enhance the call for projects, procedures, and processes. Um, Meg would also like to use several resources uh, from FHWA and through our partnership with ASU on ways to address local agency challenges and barriers. And we'd like to thank everyone in advance for your time should you choose to respond to the email. Uh, this is a reminder to please reach out to Karen Nasser at MAG to coordinate pickup of the bikeways maps. And if possible, we would prefer arranging a pickup time here at MAG, but we will definitely coordinate with your agency if delivery is needed. And that concludes my announcements. Thank you. Item number four, <clears throat> excuse me, approval of consent agenda. We have one item on the consent agenda, which is item 4A, approval of the September 20, 2022 minutes meeting minutes. Is there a motion to approve this consent item 4A or any changes? Anderson, I shall move, approve. Um, this is, Hill oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> Did somebody have a change they need? Yeah, my name's Elaine Mariel and I just wanted to give you the correct spelling of my last name. Okay, go ahead. It's M-A-R-I-O-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I did say the uh, motion wrong. This is Anderson. I move, we approve. Okay, thank you. Do we have a second? Second, Fountain Hills. Okay, thank you, Justin. Okay, we'll do a roll call vote of all members participating. So please indicate how you will vote. Thank you, Chair. Grant Anderson? Aye. Marielle Brown? Aye. Thank you. Stephen Chang? Aye. Aye. Chair Con Thank you. Chair Conclu? Aye. Thank you. Stephen Esther? Aye. Allison Feliz? Aye. Brandon Forey? Aye. Nina Arendo? Abstain as I was not present. Jason Harris? Aye. Reed Kempton? Aye. Elaine Mario? 
Oops. Aye. Thank you. Jose Macias. Aye. Christine McMurdy. Aye. Mark Millstone. Aye. Randy Proach. Aye. Earl Ratledge. I abstain. I wasn't here. Thank you. Patrick Sage. Aye. Kelsey Shotnick. I abstain. I wasn't here. Okay. Garrett Topham. Aye. Justin Weldy. Aye. Nathan Williams. I know Nathan is here, but I maybe there's something with the sound. Hear me? Aye. Oh, there you are. Thank there you. Thank Sorry. you very much. No problem. And Chase Wallman. Aye. Thank you, everyone. And the motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to item number five. This item will be presented by Wang Zhang, MAG Transportation Data Program Manager. Thank you, Madam Chair and the MAG Active Transportation uh, Committees. Uh, do I have my uh, permission to share my screen? Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, thank you. All right. Um, so again, for the next 20 minutes, I just want to give you all an update of the um, uh, the related uh, related uh, uh, the non-motorized data and uh, studies uh, Mac has been doing in the last uh, two years. Um, so this is outline for today's uh, presentation. Um, Are we hold it, hold it. We cannot see what you're referring to. We can only see a picture of you. Mm. With your oh. background. It may depend, Grant, it may depend how you have your items shown on your screen. Cause I, I was able to see his slides, but you may have to move at your end, move the um, window over that have all the staff. Everybody's I second that I can see the outline. Yeah. I, I can see it also. We can see. So Grant, you might, and I've done this before as well, where I couldn't see things. You might have to go um, look at your layout um, so that you're showing both the video and the speaker or the video and um, the participants. It's kind of at the top of where the, it's at the top of where the um, speakers are. Or participants. Try to adjust it. So if I stop my video, does it help? Hello, I, Wang. I, I think you were fine the way you were presenting it um, as you originally intended. Okay. So okay. let's continue. Okay. Yeah. So, so outline for today's uh, you know talk. Uh, first, uh, we're gonna look at the, you know what kind of the non-motorized, I mean, pedestrian bike data we have been connecting in the last two years, and uh, we also wanna take a look at the, the, the analysis we did based on the data we connected, uh, like uh, the non-motorized traffic uh, trends and uh, patterns, and uh, followed by the part two, which is uh, our newly uh, launched uh, you know uh, cloud-based uh, management system specifically for pedestrian and the bicycle data. Okay, um, you know, we started uh, to take care of this region-wide, uh, you know, data connection uh, from 2020. And uh, because of COVID, it was postponed for about 10 months. Uh, so we, we plan to start from the beginning of the 2020, but we eventually kick it off at the end of the 2020. And uh, we finished all, you know, about 500 um, location of data connection uh, in the late um, spring of this year, 2022, took us uh, you know a year and a half to finish all the data connections, and uh, obviously we purposely avoid the summer because we know the pedestrian and the bicyclists that will travel significantly less uh, during our off-peak season, which is the summer. And for these 500 plus locations, uh, they are consisted of the uh, the wish list locations that uh, our member agencies provided uh, in 2019. 
as well as the location is map added uh, for uh, sp different specific uh, studies. And uh, we have, you know, uh, compiled all the, you know, um, number of SCAM files and the manifest files ready for sharing. So if you would like to have a copy of the data in your jurisdiction or maybe as a whole for the whole region, uh, please reach out to me or reach out to Kay after uh, the meeting. Uh, we'd be happy to share with that. And also the data is being uh, populated to our new, um, you know, launched the website, uh, which you will get the exact same information um, by simply going to the website. Uh, I will have a couple more slides uh, specific for that. Uh, and in addition to this short-term counts we did in the last two years, um, we are also happy to receive the, you know, some permanent counters uh, traffic counts uh, for number of travel from city of Mesa and the city of Scottsdale. Uh, just want to do a shout out, appreciate their effort of sharing the data with us. Uh, we also did some analysis on the top of their permanent counts data, uh, which is really interesting, and we'll share that in this presentation. And, uh, and one second, if I could ask another question because I'm still not getting it. I've looked at everything, and I did get something that post disabled participant screen sharing. I have a note that says that. Is it <clears throat> at your end? Is it only showing you the um, members of the committee? Correct. Okay. So if you go up above that, there's a, several little symbols. There's a minimize one, and then there's another one next to it, and there's two kind of stacked. If you click that, that will probably change how you're seeing the meeting. Um, there's another one that says show grid video, but that just shows you more people. So maybe try that. It's probably hiding a window for you so that you're not able to see his presentation. And you may even have to move things, like click and move things around. I don't mind doing that, but I don't find what you're referring to at all. Okay. Yeah. But okay. okay. Excuse Go me, ahead. Chair. Yes. Um, I Grant, I can follow up with you right now through email to give you our um, tech support. So you can do that while the meeting is, continues. Is that okay? Yes, that's just fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Grant, this is this is Reed. If you can see the box that says view options, click side by side. That might help. Thanks, Reed. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Let's continue. So as you can see on this map, uh, that highlights all the locations we have done number of data collection in the last two years. And the size of the dot represents the uh, you know, the activity level of the pedestrian and bicycle travel. The larger the, the dot means uh, you know busier uh, travel for number of rides. Um, and also, you know, for the last uh, you know three to four years, we constantly have um, you know have access to the Strava platform. So that's uh, uh, just the list of the, all the potential number of data source we have uh, that uh, we put into this uh, relevant uh, analysis and studies. So based on the data we collected in last two years, here's some just a quick summary uh, of the tree map. Uh, obviously, when you look at which months we did the uh, data collection in the counts, we focus on the spring and the fall season on November, April, or December, October. Those are the months we did the significant amount of the data connections. In terms of how long the data connection is, um, many locations we did it for 12 hours. We covered the entire daylight. And the uh, sound of location, depending on you know, the technologies and the location, we do it uh, in more or less hours. And we do have some uh, other locations that we have them cover over 24 hours or two, three days, even to an entire week. Um, and when you look at the facility type, uh, where exactly we did the data collection, uh, the majority, 78% of the location within this list are, come, are coming from intersections. I'm sorry, so, um, sorry for my typo right there. Um, and other than intersections, we also count it at the you know, segment and the multi-use ways. And in terms of the jurisdiction where those counts are from, coming from, uh, Phoenix, Tempe, Scottsdale, those are the uh, uh, cities who we, we kind of a little bit more compared to other cities, but we do make sure we maintain, uh, uh, you know, a, a certain balance uh, among all those uh, jurisdictions in terms of number of counts. And uh, some fun facts: uh, just uh, look at those 500 plus locations data. Uh, where do we see high counts uh, in pedestrian, uh, which is on the left side? As you can see, uh, they are very concentrated in Phoenix and Tempe downtown. And when you look at the where we have uh, extremely high uh, bicycle counts, uh, 
city of Tempe uh, around the ASU obviously pops up, uh, which is I'm talking about the map on the right hand side. There's also a couple of, you know, canals, uh, recreational, um, heavily recreational, you know, route for bikers uh, are also popping up on the map. Next, let's look, let's look at the most speed, just uh, the, the share of the, of, the, of the travel between pedestrian and the bikes. When you look at in the middle, uh, that's a statistic based on our map counts out of those 500 locations. At the intersection, uh, we look at the 85% of the travel conducted by pedestrian, and only 15% uh, is actually coming from the bicyclist. Uh, but when you look at the segment level or multi-use paths, uh, it's quite different stories. Uh, you see uh, around 60% of them are coming from the uh, bicyclist and 40% uh, coming from pedestrian. This is actually uh, in, um, agreeable with uh, our permanent count stations data coming from city of Mesa on the left and the city of Scottsdale on the right. They both show about 40% of the pedestrian versus 60% of the bicyclists. As you can see, so it's a different kind of market for non-motorized travelers to go. Uh, at the segment or multi-use way or those uh, you know, recreational passes, you see uh, more bikers than pedestrians. However, at the intersection levels, uh, you definitely see much more pedestrians uh, versus uh, uh, bicyclists. And using the permanent count, uh, you know, we did some uh, seasonal uh, variation analysis, just try to appreciate the peak and off peak. Uh, of the of the travel and uh, this slide shows uh, just a couple of the permanent accounts coming from city of Mesa. Uh, it's for pedestrian only. Uh, there's a couple of the you know um, charts I'm showing on this uh, on the on the screen. On the on the vertical it's uh, months. Uh, so on the top is January, on the bottom is December, and uh, on on the uh, horizon it's a uh, day of the week. Uh, from the most left the Sunday to the most right Saturday. Uh, the color represents uh, the level of activity. The darker means more activities. As you can see, when you talk about pedestrian uh, at certain locations, on uh, the top two on the on the on the on the top shows there's a, a, a clear peak. Uh, you know, on during the weekend, uh, Saturday and uh, and uh, and the Sundays. Uh, but you can also see on other locations, uh, it may be a little bit different. I'm talking about the the graphic on the top uh, to the right hand side. Uh, they do show uh, uh, even more counts uh, observed during the during the middle of the week as compared to the weekend. So pedestrian, you kind of get a different flavor, really depending on where the location is. However, the bicyclist uh, is uh, more clear in terms of their trains. Uh, this is uh, just a couple of locations coming from city of Scottsdale permanent counts. As you can see, bicyclists definitely prefer to travel to head the road uh, during the weekend. Um, you know, Saturday is probably the highest and uh, followed by Sunday and they, their travel level during the middle of the day significant, significantly reduced. So with, uh, you know, permanent counts data, which covers 365 days, uh, you know, um, counts on, on certain locations, we're able to look at, uh, you know, how the seasonal variation is and, uh, and we can also compare uh, this uh, kind of results coming from our permanent counters uh, you know, from Mesa and uh, Scottsdale to the Strava's, uh, you know, uh, seasonal variations uh, uh, results, which I'm showing them side by side. For example, on the top uh, is, uh, uh, is our permanent counters uh, results, on the bottom is the Strava's. And on the left-hand side is pedestrian, on the right-hand side is bicycle. And uh, it's kind of similar organizations. You have months from January to December from top to bottom, and you have day, time of the day for 24 hours from left to right. As you can see, their shape are very similar, which is a good news, which means, you know, the, the patterns uh, we observed from Strava data for many years, seems like uh, is agreeable to the patterns we just analyzed uh, from our fresh uh, permanent counters data. And as you can see, um, you know, the, the, the non-motorized travelers uh, intend to travel fairly early in the morning, five o'clock, six o'clock during our summertime. They try to avoid uh, you know, the high temperature, uh, the severe, you know, winter conditions. As you can see, there's a, there is a big white hole in the middle of each chart, which is, uh, you know, the middle of the day and the summer. So that's where we do not necessarily see a lot of activities of non motorized travel. But, uh, you know, bicyclists, I already mentioned, they intend to travel early uh, in the summer, um, you know, similar to the, to the pedestrian as well. But the pedestrian would uh, travel, for example, in the wintertime or spring, 
and uh, and the fall on um, more concentrate in the middle of the day because that's kind of more pleasant condition for them to travel rather than beating the cold weather uh, cold te uh, low temperatures uh, during the winter they will travel less so um, we're glad to see you know the the, the seasonal variations um, and the time of day patterns between different sources they all come together really nicely for different loads. And when you're talking about uh, you know, um, com uh, the analysis coming from different sources and what is the peak and off peak travel in our, in our region, uh, they all you know, agree with each other, no matter it's pedestrian or bicycle, no matter it's a Strava or permanent accounts data coming from different jurisdictions. They all show in January to April uh, is a uh, peak seasons, peak months uh, among uh, you know, entire year in terms of number of travel. And, uh, and, and the, the activity dropped to 50% during the uh, summertime and the bounce back to, you know, as we speak right now, uh, October, uh, October, November, that's a second peak, but still the, uh, the full uh, travel season is still a little bit lower uh, than the, um, the peak season in the beginning of the year. So it seems like the, the spring has a little bit more travel than the full season and uh, the lowest, the bottom is the summer in our region. So that's uh, the data we connected in the last two years and the relevant studies and analysis we did, um, you know, based on the data we have. Uh, in the next, uh, I just want to, you know, give you guys the good news of all this data we connected. Uh, you know, we have adapted a new cloud-based uh, um, data management system, um, you know, developed by MS2, and um, uh, it's already launched uh, in September. Uh, it's good to go. Everybody get to go to this website when you have a chance. It does not require login. Um, all the information is public reviewable. Um, so there's a different way to, do, uh, to go there. Uh, first, uh, you want to bookmark this uh, website, uh, um, mactrans.org, and that's how you're going to get there. Uh, I'm just going to take you to the um, website for a quick demo. Um, so once you go to the website, that's how it looks like, and you want to click on the MDS, not motorized. So this is one of the uh, several modules we adapt the um, um, you know, um, MS2 sub products. And uh, this is showing all the locations we currently have on the system. We're still in the process of populating uh, more counts to the, to the web portal. So you may see there's 500 more uh, locations already on the website, but not necessarily uh, each location already has the data. So we're still in the process of getting the data uploaded to the system. Um, and uh, if you go to analysis, you go hit the search. That's going to show you which location we're going to have the data. And another neat thing about this module is because we also have our traffic counts and uh, turning movement counts and the intersection level uh, embedded to the same system. So if you turn on the different layers and you zoom into a particular area, so you're able to look at how does a particular location's non-motorized counts compared to the, the car counts uh, and the counter, compared to the intersection turning movement counts at a particular areas? Um, I think uh, people would uh, really love to use that functions. And uh, if I do a quick demo on, on particular locations, let's see if we get some uh, Counts. See, we can uh, just go to a, one particular count, and it's going to show where it is, and then uh, that's going to show you when we did the counts, what is hourly counts, and uh, what is the day of the week. For example, in this in, um, location, we counted for three days: Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, and then um, there's also um, the time of day distribution and the actual counts for this particular locations. Um, so. Like I say, let give us some time. Let's finish up the the, uh, the data population, and uh, then we will send out an invitation to um to to invite the, the vendor to give us a, a full blown you know demo for this website. And uh, I make sure the news reach out to you uh, through K, and then you all are invited to to come to this uh, live demo to learn uh, more about it and. Uh, uh, this website is just uh, being launched and we want to treat it as an ecosystem. We want to kind of continue to de develop that. Uh, we will put, uh, you know, all the data we just connected in the last two years on the website, followed by our historic counts in the last 10 years to the website. And uh, if you have any additional number of accounts you're willing to share with Mac, uh, you feel um, that you would like to, you know, share through this website, 
please reach out to us and uh, we'd be happy to take your data, put it on this, uh, on this place so everybody can, uh, can get to use it. Okay, so that's my first part of the presentation. The second part, uh, I just wanna give you guys some uh, um, summary of the, some other related studies and um, uh, we have done in the last two years. Um, first of all, you know, since we have access to the Strava data, and we know Strava data is highly biased against the recreational travels. And we did see that in the, one of the previous slides, how does Strava pattern compare to our permanent constellation is pattern, right? And uh, so now we have five, 500, uh, you know, good solid uh, um, non-motorized counts. So we wanna be able to compare these two different sources and try to adjust the Strava data a little bit more uh, to make it uh, a more, um, Indicational uh, to actual, you know, um, non-motorized travel. So that this is ongoing uh, statistical analysis that we're we're doing with uh, Texas a and Transmit Institute. Um, so we're going to write a report. We're going to produce the model to um, adjust uh, the Strava counts based on our actual counts. And then essentially, the deliverable coming out of this analysis is a region-wide coverage of the non-motorized travel at any given intersection or segments, you will have an adjusted uh, uh, estimation uh, for non travel in our region. Another pilot effort we did in 2021 last year is uh, we are partnered with two cities, City of Phoenix and City of Tempe, to uh, evaluate different uh, you know, ITS uh, devices at intersection level on different intersections. Uh, we ended up uh, evaluating seven different uh, technologies at intersection, mainly to look at uh, the two things. First is, uh, can we utilize this uh, video-based uh, technologies to detect the motion of the pedestrian and the bicycle travel uh, when they try to cross intersection? If they're able to successfully detect those motions, uh, if this particular uh, pedestrian or people having difficulty to complete the street crossing uh, this technology, this device is able to send out a signal to the control cabinet of the traffic light and uh, to extend uh, the crossing time uh, for a certain amount of the time to allow this pedestrian safely cross the streets. So that's one thing we, we pilot, we evaluate uh, all seven technologies. And another thing is, uh, you know, we want to see uh, can these technologies conduct continuous traffic counts for non-motorized travel uh, to what kind of level. So we did evaluate uh, all the technologies uh, in the last year, um, comparing with other sources of data and produce, um, doing the cross experiment to see how does the detect, uh, 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 detection works uh, and the green, uh, green time uh, extension works. And um, our conclusion is uh, pedestrian counting is fairly accurate among all different kinds of technologies. And, but the bicycle counting is a little bit more challenging uh, than the pedestrian counting. They may uh, you know, under or over count or miscount a certain bicycle list. And uh, four out of the seven technologies are ready to be deployed. Uh, if you would like to, you know, turn on this uh, functionality at an inter intersection level uh, to, um, to extend the pedestrian crossing. So last page of my presentation, uh, you know, since COVID, uh, we have put up the website and it's really easy to remember, just Google Mac COVID traffic. Uh, that will get you to the um, a webpage we uh, maintain on a monthly basis. Um, this webpage shows all the travel and the traffic uh, trends within our valley since COVID. And one of the, the trends that we keep publishing on a weekly basis is based on the Strava data to show uh, the, uh, the pedestrian and the bikes, uh, you know, trend since COVID. As you can see the blue line, I'm taking the, the wrong walk hike or pedestrian as an example on the left-hand side. The blue line is 2020. Uh, you, know, you know, before COVID, our level of the pedestrian travel is fairly low, but uh, actually COVID jumpstarts a, a, a totally uh, a new uh, era of the pedestrian travel, as you can see, after COVID, um, you know, people in turn to head out of the door more, and we still have peak and off peak. But uh, since COVID, uh, the trend for last three years are pretty consistent. Um, you know, there's a higher, there's lower travel months, but they all have been higher than pre-COVID uh, areas. So, and the the situation at the bicycle travel is also similar. So if you're interested in, you know, in knowing the, the non-motor travel trend, uh, you're welcome to check out this website. 
Um, I think uh, next is my uh, last page of presentation. Just want to, you know, share my contact here and also list uh, um, our teams who's, uh, who's worked on this uh, uh, relevant studies in the last couple of years. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions for Mr. Zhang? I, I'm going to start with a couple of mine and then um, like to call on people as they raise their hands. Um, do you, I was looking on the dashboard and it showed the highest locations. Do you happen to know why the Ray Road location is much higher than any of those other high counts? Is there, I don't have a lot of context for that area, but I thought, okay, maybe it's somewhere where there's always a lot of high ridership. Yes, Madam Chair. Um, I think the reason you're seeing that particular location uh, ended up on um, top one is we haven't populated all the locations data yet. Um, okay. We're still, um, I think, uh, at least 50% uh, of the data are waiting to be populated. So this this list will continue to be updated uh, as we progress in our data uploading. So right now, I don't think that's a final version yet. Okay, thank you. Well, I really like the dashboard. It, I think it's a great way to be able to show the information and share that out. Thank you. Are there any other uh, comments or questions from members of the committee? And I don't know if there's a raise hand feature, so I'll entertain anyone to jump in and give your questions. Oh, go ahead. Um, Earl, go ahead. Yeah, this is Earl Radlich from the Coalition Arizona Bicycles. I also looked at this from the link and kind of played around with it. And I think the dashboard has some great information in it. Um, on the raw data side, you said you're able to download the raw data behind this. Is that all available too, or is that also being loaded at this time? Uh, yes, uh, I don't think that the data it can be downloaded, uh, you know, from the website. I think it's more for for, for viewing purposes. But if you okay. need uh, the data behind it, uh, please reach out to me. We will work on something else for you. We do have yeah. all the individual count files uh, ready for sharing. Okay, yeah, because I have a, a mapping database on the internet that shows where all the crashes are for like the last nine years. And I'd be interested in looking at some of these traffic volumes relative to where those crashes occur. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, when uh, in, when I'm ready to look at that, I will reach out to you. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Sorry, I don't have a hand thing. I couldn't find it. But um, what is all of this data intended to be used for? Um, Ms. Anderson, there are different ways of using the data. I think initially when we, I think it's in 2019, when we sit down with the active transportation uh, committees, we ask for the wish list locations from each individual jurisdictions. Um, most of them provided the wish list and uh, that's where we execute uh, the data connection from. Um, so I think uh, each member agencies will be the best uh, source to address why those locations uh, are requested to be counted. Uh, on the top of the locations, outside of the wish list location from member agencies, uh, MAC also maintain, uh, you know, a bike model. So we need the data uh, for, uh, as, a, as, a, as a calibration target for our modeling exercise, for our, you know, system analysis. And uh, as you can see, you know, we all, we all have interest of how to link the, the non-motorized traffic data to the motorized traffic data and potentially analyze uh, any potential, you know, um, safety analysis. Uh, so that's also one of the values of the of this data set. Thank you. Thank you, Nina. You have a question? Yes, I was just curious if any data was collected for Santan Valley area. Just off my top of my head, I don't think we received the wish list location from Santan Valley, but I, I can get back to you. Um, you know, once we have the full list of the locations, I, I need to double check. Okay. I do believe we cover Queen Creek uh, as far as uh, Southeast goes. Yeah, because I know we're in the, of course, in the Meg uh, area. So I wanted to see about, you know, seeing what kind of data that was collected for 
Santan Valley. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, looks like everyone's just so excited. We'll we'll probably think of questions later. This is great information and appreciate your presentation and, and everything you've been putting into the data collection. Thank, Thank you. you. So moving on to item number six, this item will be presented by Chris I'm sorry if I'm going to say your name right, God, Godsaker, Mag Transportation Engineer 2. Was I close? You were pretty close. Yeah, okay, Chris Gottsacker. Gottsacker, uh, thank you. No problem. Thank you so much. Um, I will go ahead and share my screen as well. Can you confirm uh, you all can see my screen? I've lost um, the the Zoom meeting on my end. Not yet. Um, it's still just showing us okay. the members. Uh, oh, I also need to do this though. Okay, it's it's starting to share. There it goes. Thank you. All right. Thank you all uh, for your time this afternoon. Um, and thank you. Um, for the opportunity, really appreciate it. So as mentioned, I'm Chris Gottsacker. Um, I'm with the MAG Transportation Safety Program. Uh, I've been here for about two years and I have the pleasure of focusing primarily on pedestrian and bike safety programs. Um, so that includes items like Safe Routes to School as well as this program, which is called See Me AZ. Um, this is our effort to engage and educate the public on transportation safety with a focus on interactions between various modes, primarily pedestrian cyclists and drivers. Um, since we've adopted the safe system approach um, in our SKSP, uh, this program fits primarily under the principles of responsibility is shared and redundancy is crucial uh, to the extent at which um, they can under a planning agency where we don't own any right of way. Um, I'll note that we do fund uh, safety projects for local agencies. Uh, but what the actual projects um, are applied for is up to those agencies themselves. Um, we do support and encourage, um, I guess, more progressive um, design um, projects, um, but cannot decide what is best for each agency. Um, we've also uh, received some comments uh, from the public via our webpage um, and last couple months here uh, and that's been very helpful for us. Um, first, it lets us know that the program is getting out there. Uh, it's been out officially since February or probably March or April 2021 is when we had our first sort of ad campaign. Um, so it's great that we're getting a little bit more traction it seems like. And then second, since it is still relatively young, we're always looking for ways to improve our program. Um, and so we found these comments really helpful. Um, so basically today, I hope I can uh, provide some good information about our program, um, but also looking forward to your questions, feedback, and hoping some of you want to become partners for the program and engage with us. Um, and together, uh, I do think we can gradually move the needle on uh, creating a culture of traffic safety in our in our region. So. Thank you. Um, with that, I'll, I'll go into a little bit more background, um, our purpose, how it's been implemented so far, and then some options for involvement or how we envision uh, that involvement. Um, the slide is usually somewhat long in background. I'll try to make it as short as possible. Um, but basically, in 2017, um, the director of the Arizona Governor's Office of Highway Safety, or GOES, um, requested that uh, we develop a working group to develop an education and enforcement funding request focused on pet and bike safety um, that we would then submit for a funding proposal. Uh, but later we were notified that they would only be taking grant applications from enforcement agencies, um, specifically for enforcement activities. Um, so we decided to instead use 
the developed application materials as a starting point to create a task in the update to the Regional Strategic Transportation Safety Program. So in 2019, we convened a task force. Um, I, backing up a little bit, this was all, this was before I joined MAG. So major kudos to Margaret Herrera, Herrera um, the safety program manager. Um, we worked with the MAG communication team to develop the CMEAZ webpage, creative branded branding, and started a toolkit. Uh, in February 2021, we brought on a media consultant um, to develop an implementation plan um, for a media push ahead of enforcement activities that we did in four pilot cities the last two weeks of April 2021. Um, they also helped develop a survey uh, in conjunction with the task force uh, to evaluate the impact of the program. Um, in the fall, we also did activ uh, enforcement activities um, in mid September. Um, and then in November of 2021, we had our first um, after survey to sort of get our first hint at evaluation, I guess. Um, we did not use any enforcement in the spring or this fall of 2022 um, due to some logistical and coordination issues that came up in evaluating first year's data. Uh, we couldn't really get a good consensus on procedures. Um, so it became very difficult, if not impossible, to um, fully vet or evaluate that process. Um, but instead, we've met with FHWA, um, as well as researchers from, I think it was Rutgers University, um, as part of the focus approach to safety, uh, to sort of brainstorm how to reimagine uh, this aspect of the program. Um, we really want to engage with local communities and the traveling public. Uh, but want to make sure we meet them where they are instead of making the public come to us. Um, so this year we're working more. We've also worked with um, the task force and um, the media consultant to redesign the logo, which um, the logo was on that very first uh, screen. And it's um, also on all of these other ads, um, and we've created new ads, which are sort of splattered around this presentation as well. Um, so yeah, moving on um, for some high level context, uh, the MAG Transportation Safety Program was initiated in 2002 uh, to identify current and potential future transportation related safety issues, concerns and needs in the region, um, and also determine ways to address them through the regional transportation planning process. Um, so for CMEAZ, uh, research has found that most bicycle and pedestrian crashes happen when drivers, cyclists, and pedestrians sail to, fail to see one another, um, hence the term CMEAZ. Um, and we, we just seek to raise awareness of pedestrian and motorist laws uh, and ultimately change behavior that lead to pedestrian and cyclist crashes and injuries and fatalities. Um, broadly, the, the purpose, that, that's sort of like the broad purpose. Um, and then alongside that, we have the goals of informing people about their roles and responsibilities for safely sharing the road and increasing um, awareness of laws that relate to traffic safety. Um, here's a quote from a former chair of MAG Regional Council, um, basically, I, we just include this to illustrate the support um, at all levels of, um, of government. The MAG Regional Council is made up of local agency mayors, um, as well as state and other transportation directors. Um, all right, uh, some background data. This We have updated this um, with the most recent data that ADOT has finalized, so through 2021. Um, I mean, the numbers speak for themselves, 132% increase in pedestrian fatalities from 2012 to 2021. Um, obviously a slight dip in 2019, uh, but really back up to 2018 already. And I mean, frankly, I, I think the trend is uh, continuing to increase based on presentations from ADOT on preliminary 2022 numbers. Um, bicycle crashes are, they fluctuate a bit more. They are up. Um, over the last 10 years, again, this year, um, I think we had 
27 bicycle fatalities in the region in 2021. Um, so, but basically the, the safety team at MAG tracks safety trends um, often, I mean, continuous review and data analysis. Um, and so on average, it's, uh, it's 150 plus lives each year um, due to pedestrian and, and bicyclist crashes. Um, so I mentioned that we did a, a survey to evaluate the program. Um, this slide is still from that uh, initial survey. Um, so kind of before all of the initial media push, um, the after survey had essentially the same numbers, um, some minor differences. I mean, there was, the survey is like 30 questions. So I just have some of the highlights on this slide. Um, but we also didn't really expect to see a massive difference um, in just one year where that first year was, okay, let's try to get this program out there, get people aware of the program. And now we're, um, with our updated materials, we're getting more at specific behaviors um, and, and safety tips to actually improve safety. Um, let's see, uh, background on the survey though, um, our uh, consultant used, um, for year one, they used a platform called Dynata and then we had to switch to a different one year too, but it's basically the first and second largest um, market research platforms in the world. So it's used by the likes of CNN, Pew, um, basically any large uh, market research that needs to be done, you would use a, a platform like one of these. Um, so we're able to get a very good uh, sample of the area that matches our demographics. Um, with relatively few responses. So I think we have under 600 responses and we have a, a pretty strong idea of the general population's uh, trends and opinions. Um, so, I mean, in addition to these call outs that I have, um, actually, I, in the interest of time, I won't get into more details. Um, we are doing this again in uh, this November. Um, so hopefully we'll see a little bit of a shift now that um, we are seeing more visits to our website, longer uh, stays on the website, um, higher video completion rate. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll actually show one of our new videos. This one is focused on cyclist safety. Uh, the key mes messages, drivers giving bicyclists more space when they're passing them. Um, We've also got a video on driver distraction and then one on uh, pedestrians walking at night, uh, trying to increase visibility so that drivers have more time to react. Um, they can't react if they don't see you basically. Um, so I, I'll note that this program is focused equally on all modes sharing responsibility for, for road safety. Um, and when we say that in no way are we absolving drivers of responsibility. Um, nor are we blaming the victim in any way. Uh, that's part of the redundancy component of that safe system approach is we all do need to work together um, and acknowledge our own agency in um, creating, a, creating a safe system. So uh, with that. I just need my space. I see. Is that so bad? Three feet. It's all I'm asking. I just don't want to get hurt again. When sharing the road, please give bicyclists more space, at least three feet when passing. She's good. For more shared roadway safety tips, visit cmeaz.com. All right. Um, I hope that played okay um, for all of, all of you. Um, in case it was studying or anything, though, um, all of the videos are on our website, just cmaz.com, um, and you'll find them. And we also have two animated uh, videos, one in English, one in Spanish, um, from the first year. So you can kind of see the evolution of the program and uh, how we've been able to uh, spend more time um, getting at specific behaviors. Um, this is actually a, a screenshot of that web page, so you'll, you'll know you're in the right uh, right place. Um, 
I've also got some more screenshots here. So we've also got uh, safety tips focused at each of the modes. Um, they're relatively evenly split. Um, I think we, yeah, we've got 11 for drivers, nine for cyclists and 10 for pedestrians. Um, some general overview and uh, statistic callouts. Um, for instance, like a third of all traffic fatalities in our region in 2021, as well as 2020, where people um, walking or riding a bike. Uh, and I think the national average is just under a quarter of all traffic fatalities. Uh, so we are overrepresented in that regard, um, which is probably part of why uh, our region was designated a um, focus approach to safety area for uh, pedestrians. Uh, we've also got some testimonial videos, uh, one from a detective in vehicular crimes um, and then a trauma surgeon. Uh, they both have a lot of experience working with victims of uh, traffic violence. Um, and then some uh, crash data, um, pedestrian and cyclist uh, fatalities and injuries per year. And then we also have some visuals for uh, by lighting condition and uh, location, um, location meaning intersection or non-intersection. Um, so, yeah. Um, some background linking to that uh, STSP documents. And then finally a form to fill out um, for a toolkit. So you can get materials such as this um, as well. Uh, this one is a uh, uh, for bus kiosks. Um, as well as our original posters. Um, we do still need to update these with the new logo, but we should have that within the next week or two. Um, and then we can also give all of the different ads that have been developed this year. Um, some of them are specifically developed for social media use. Um, so you won't have to worry about like resizing. Um, basically for, for the toolkit materials, um, we'll just follow up with you um, ask that you provide some information about how they'll be used. Um, and we do request that you like, leave the MAG logo there for, for the posters, for instance. Um, you can make some small edits if you want to add your own logo. Um, we encourage that, of course. Um, I will say that MAG doesn't have the funds uh, as part of this program to help print those. Um, so you would have to use your own funds. Um, we are looking at different ways for um, community engagement in the future, but currently all of our funds for um, are sort of all uh, uh, locked in. So, um, all right, moving on, focus approach to safety, um, identified as a region um, through FHWA for pedestrians. Um, so we've been engaged with their staff as well as consultants and researchers. I mentioned this before. Uh, we've only had one meeting so far, but it was quite fruitful. Um, we're working with them in two ways. First, to determine how to better evaluate success of the program. And second, to redesign how we engage with the public via enforcement. If enforcement is even the correct word to use anymore, it probably won't be in that traditional sense. Um, we would like to engage with public safety personnel. Uh, we just found it a little bit challenging uh, to get all participating agencies on the same page. Um, just made it really hard to conduct any evaluation. Um, so we're brainstorming new, approach, new approaches with our partners and ideally we'll land on an easily measurable but community focused approach. Um, so ways for you all to get involved. Um, we can do these, uh, bus kiosk posters in multiple format or in a couple different formats. Um, here's one with Chandler's logo. Uh, they were the ones that uh, sought uh, the toolkit materials um, and we worked with them to sort of redesign this um, uh, for them. We also had Valley Metro's community wrap program last year. Um, so this was out for several months. It is um, off of the light rail now. Um, another idea we had is um, Local agencies have a lot of these traffic control boxes and most of them are are just the bland white or gray um, or just steel. So uh, we would be happy to work with you all to um, 
to design uh, the materials to to either wrap or be painted on on these. But we also encourage any creative ideas that you all have. We would certainly be willing to work with you to um, get files in the correct formats or um, do some design tweaks so that they they fit your needs. Um, and then in some, this program has been collaborative uh, from the beginning. Uh, CME AZ Task Force currently consists of members from Glendale, Phoenix, Chandler, Tempe, and Valley Metro, um, and then obviously MAG as well. Um, but we're always looking for more interested in, and engaged uh, individuals to join us, particularly from agencies not yet engaged. Um, our vision is to eventually not need to pay for advertising at all and to rely more on organic community-driven approaches to disseminate program information and education materials. Um, so if anyone is interested in, in uh, joining us, um, please shoot us an email and um, otherwise let us know if you have any questions and thank you for your time. Thank you so much. I'll ask a couple of questions and then ask members if they have any questions. Um, what, this is more of just a comment. It is reminding people that this education piece is a component of the safe systems approach and is mentioned in your um, safe system in action plan. My real question is, is MAG or will MAG consider sub submitting an application for a safe streets and roads for all implementation grant in a future cycle to the federal government since you actually looks like you already have your action plan in place and um, organizations like MAG are eligible to apply. Is that something that could be more of a regional implementation solution for the engineering side of this kind of plan? Um, so that's a great question and one that Margaret may be better equipped to answer. Um, as far as I understand though, um, we did look at applying this year, opted not to because it wasn't totally clear if we were actually eligible okay. um, to apply. Uh, we are, it is something that I know we're tracking though and um, we'll potentially apply for in coming years. Great. Um, I do wanna give Margaret a chance to jump in if she wants to add anything okay. though. Thank you. Sure, Chris. So just quickly, um, you were, um, Accurate in that uh, we did look there. There's a section of the eligibility for um, safe streets and roads for all the SS4A um, where you gauge if you if your action plan is um, self certification eligible. Um, there's several elements to that. Um, and there were a couple of elements in there that at this time, the MAG strategic transportation safety plan or safe system in action. Um, does not meet those requirements at this time. Um, we're working with FHWA in a couple of different efforts. One was the focused approach to safety that Chris had already mentioned. Um, the other is a grant that we received. It's kind of an in-kind. We don't actually see any funds from that, but they do have a consultant that they've hired to work with us um, to review that plan. So um, we're hoping to get some better direction from FHWA regarding that in the future. Great, thank you. Yeah, that's the tricky part is that um, eligibility checklist, but it looks like they're making a, a process for agencies to be able to either bring their plans up to meet that um, in the future and then apply for implementation. Thank you. Do I have any hands that anyone could raise if they have comments or questions? I have one. Thank you, go ahead. This is Anderson again. Um, we got a comment from the public at the beginning of the meeting. I don't know if you heard that uh, long, detailed comment letter that uh, a lady sent in. But in some cases, uh, like your premise, uh, she indicated in her comment that it wasn't quite correct. Shared responsibility she said should actually be changed. The larger you are, the more responsibility that you have is what she said. Now, that's, I don't quite agree with that either, but certainly uh, there were other notes and comments that she made in her letter that I think you need to take a look at uh, strongly because 
it was well put together and seemed like the lady had a lot of knowledge in the area. Um, I did hear the hear the comments. Um, I I do agree. There was definitely some uh, some very thoughtful um, ideas and and, uh, and and concepts in in the comment. Um, and I am aware. Yes, there are different opinions on how responsibility should be, um, or to what extent responsibility is shared. Um, I guess I would say our program goals were um, were vetted by member agencies as well as aligned with uh, federal um, ideals. Um, I don't know if I'm equipped to say much more beyond that right now. Um, I would like to keep it keep it more general. Um, I would also invite Margaret to uh, chime in again if she has anything else to add. Thank you. Those are great comments, um, Grant. Thank you for that. And um, just to say that we really appreciate comments that we receive on this program because as Chris mentioned, it is fairly new and we are always looking for making improvements to the program. And so we always appreciate the comments. Um, we did read the comments uh, this morning and we'll add that to um, upcoming discussions that we have as we do continually regarding this program. So um, your point is very well taken as well as the, the comments of um, the member of the public. And so it, we, we thank everybody for, for providing comments. Thank you. Yes, very true. Thanks, Margaret. Thank you. Next we have um, Earl Ratledge. go ahead. Hi, this is Earl Ratledge. I'm with the Coalition of Arizona Bicyclists. Uh, we promoted this program in our newsletter when it started. And I'm wondering, you know, we probably will promote it again next year. Is this something for the Maricopa region or the Maricopa County region only or people that are covered in MAG or would this be, these, this information be available or these, these flyers and stuff be available for use by people outside of the area? Um, I think officially it is meant to be used and disseminated within our region. I do think the materials are likely applicable in other regions and outside of our um, planning boundary. Um, so if so, if we promote this again, people could reach out to you and find out the answer to that question. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let, let me just chime in again, if I could. Yeah. Um, we would encourage anybody that wants to use this to use this. I, I think um, this information is good information and that should be broad broadcasted as much as it possibly can. Um, so I, I don't think that there's um, anything uh, that says that that anybody outside of the MAG region could utilize it. Um, I think the only um, drawback from that is um, the, the funds itself, um, particularly for things like the surveys, um, we would not be able to do survey um, outreach outside of the MAG region. Right. Yeah, so, so our, our surveys and our ads actually are only limited to, um, to the MAG planning region. Um, and obviously the, the program is called CME AZ, so it might not, like outside of the state, especially, um, it might not uh, work quite as well. Um, but even then I, I do stand by um, the program's goals and materials, so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Earl, um, I can't remember when I do remember that you had requested the toolkit. I cannot remember when it was. If you would like some of the updated materials, just let us know and we okay, can send it you. over right away. Thank you. Next is Nathan Williams. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Um, so Chris, you had a you had a slide in there that kind of broke down, I think, the three different modes and things that can be done for each mode. And I, I tried to go back and find it in the online version in the packet i didn't see it yeah there it is 
just kind of made us think about, you know, are there, did you find anything that's the most efficient um, kind of way to spend money on whether it's infrastructure or, or what um, that would, you know, you could see tangible increases in safety. Um, you know, is there anything that came to the forefront that are, you know, the best ways to spend your limited dollars on safety improvements by mode? Um, I don't, I guess, I don't know if I've seen any research that says um, X is more efficient than Y um, in terms of different programmatic elements. I guess I, I will say this is probably about as far as MAG can go as a planning agency um, is beyond, uh, I guess, like promoting or encouraging infrastructure projects focused at safety um, for local agencies to apply for funding. And then we administer those funds um, through programs such as Roadway Safety Program, Highway Safety Improvement Program. Um, and also we didn't have an educational component before um, this program started. So that's why we wanted to focus on this. Uh, we do, we're, we're very aware that education can only ever be one small piece of the puzzle um, for increasing traffic safety though. Um, so I do wanna acknowledge that. Um, and at the evaluation component, we are also um, evaluating budget spend um, to what we're seeing. So it is, um, obviously the goal of the program is to change culture, right? Which is a very long and hard process, right? Um, so I do expect it would take a few years before we even start to see a difference in those surveys, for instance, but um, we are always open to new ideas. Um, and again, it would be great to see if we can reduce our budget spend on solely media and um, I guess paid ways to to get the program out there and make it a bit more organic. And then we can maybe do um, like we, we could partner with local agencies to do like a community bike ride or something like that and and pay for some material, use some of the budget for that. But right now that's not in our in our budget. We would have to adjust it in the future moving forward. So um, I hope that answers your question. If not, feel free to bug me more. Not Thank bug me. But. Thank you. <laughs> to follow up. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Marielle Brown. Hey, thanks. Um, I, I raised my hand, but I realized we've already discussed it. Uh, the, I just wanted to say the comments that we started the meeting with, those were uh, very insightful. And, you know, I think it was a good reminder that when we look at a safe systems approach, really the, the origin of that safe systems idea is to look at what in the system is causing danger uh, with individual behavior is kind of like the lowest tier that you can affect. Um, and in this case, when we have cars that aren't just bigger, but also faster and speed is oftentimes what creates those dangerous situations and also limits people's ability to see each other. I, I think the program could really benefit from a heavy emphasis on the users that are adding danger to the system through size and weight of the vehicle and especially speed. Yeah, I mean, we do have specific tips um, on, or tips and uh, notes on driver behaviors that induce danger, right? Um, I, I will go back to the also safe system principle of responsibility is shared. Um, pedestrians and cyclists do occasionally act in dangerous ways as well. Um, and that's an unfortunate truth. Um, and so if we can all sort of uh, embrace behaviors that increase safety, um, I mean, that's redundancy, which is the other uh, principle or which is another principle of safe systems. So. It's certainly a principle, I guess. I just see when a lot of those behaviors that would be dangerous for a pedestrian and bicyclist, the da they're dangerous because the car is there causing danger. It's not inherently dangerous for someone to walk across the street. It's how traffic laws used to operate. The danger is because someone's driving a large vehicle 40 miles an hour there. And so I, I, I mean, just a comment that when we say 
uh, responsibility is shared, you know, it doesn't quite capture that where the danger is coming from. Yes, obviously everyone has to be aware, but it, it feels like we're kind of putting blame on pedestrians and bicyclists for um, one set of users that's creating a dangerous situation in the public right of way. Um, okay, I mean, thank you for your comments. Um, I do wanna be aware of time here. It sounds like this could be a very uh, fruitful discussion. I encourage you to engage with um, us more. Um, I'll just, I guess, defend, defend the program a, a little bit here and say, I do not think that we are victim blaming or absolving drivers of any responsibility by saying that responsibility is shared equally. Madam Chair, if I could. Yeah, please go ahead, Margaret. Mario, you bring up some really good points and I, I appreciate those as well. Um, I know um, that the city of Phoenix is also on the task force and we're gonna be having another task force meeting coming up. And I think it'd be um, great to bring up these aspects regarding size of vehicle and speed. Um, and that's something that we can certainly discuss, Marielle. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jose Macias? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm uh, yeah. just going to go in order of who's been waiting. <laughs> Thanks. Go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. So the only question I have, uh, Chris, first of all, great presentation. Uh, what other committees want to present to this too, or have you, uh, like, the, like the mayor's uh, council, have, have they seen this yet? Um, Margaret, correct me if I'm wrong. I think we did do one regional council presentation possibly, or you may have done one or two. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, Jose, um, great question. Yes, we did at the very beginning uh, when we requested some budget for this program, we did make a presentation to um, both MAG Management Committee as well as regional council. Okay, because I'd like to hire above people so we can probably see if we want to get more involved in this. That's why I was asking if they were aware of this. Yes, yes, um, yes, they are. And especially when we um, did the first couple of efforts with the, with the um, pilot cities, um, they were brought into the loop, uh, obviously, because they, you know, we, we did a lot of big, um, a big media push and things like that. And it also, involved their enforcement. Um, so everybody was in the loop on, on those. We're, we're gonna be having a meeting with another local agency to see how um, this could fit in um, to a partnership with them. Um, and we could certainly, um, if we wanna come up with some kind of tips to help engage um, your management, um, how to do that, uh, that might be something as well that we wanna provide a resource to. All right, well, thank you. I'll go ahead and discuss it with my director, but I wasn't sure if anybody else in the city was aware of this, so we can have a conversation in house. Yeah, it may have been a while, Jose, because um, that was back in 2019 or beginning oh, okay. of 20, I want to say. So there's been some time since then. So, okay. and a lot's happened. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a lot's happened. So I'll follow up with you guys, but I just wanted to share if anybody else besides this, this committee knew about this program. And if we wanted to partner up, so I was just curious. Yeah, well, in, in addition to the safety committee, because they provide oversight to this program as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, Mark Millstone. Yes, hi, um, Chris, you've taken care of my question. I was gonna ask you to put up your email again and thanks for doing that. All right, Grant Anderson. I have a real quick one. The data that you collected regarding the conflicts between the autos and the bicyclists on road, um, have you developed it enough where you can determine if we have a, a marked bike lane or uh, without one? And where are most of the conflicts occurring? Um, so the data that I've pre presented today is from ADOT's um, Alice uh, database, and we then port that into our regional crash database. Um, that currently does not include whether or not there is a bike lane. 
Um, we could look into specific crash reports using ADOT's system. Um, and I also, but I do not think that, I mean, some local agencies may have more um, roadway asset databases um, that include that information. I do not think that we have one for the region wide. Um, Margaret, you can correct me on that. That, that's that, something that, that is would, correct. The, the yeah. asset management, um, the, the assets um, is something that's um, a lot of work to get grant region wide, if you think about it, um, but not something that we're not interested in doing. <laughs> I would be uh, very, very interested, interested in that. In, yeah. in doing that. Um, there's a couple of different efforts that we are um, entering into here in the next um, few months that will kind of help us um, see if there's a good way to do that. Um, but yes, that's definitely something that we're interested in doing. I'm glad because that, if we had that information, we could look at different ways of making more lanes or making some sort of physical separation. Uh, Absolutely. An announcement like a rumble strip along the edge of the bike path or the bike lane, excuse me. And so it'd be nice to know if there were more or if there are any in a part marked bike lane. I'm sure there are. Absolutely. You know, the only um, thing that I could tell you is that when, when we do road safety assessments and things like that, we might come across things like that, but um, we, we do, you know, we have a limited amount of funds for the roadway safety assessment program, and we're only able to do about six to 10 a year. Um, so, but what you're talking about is something, yes, absolutely, we're definitely interested in doing and working towards. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jose, is your hand still raised for additional question or? Sorry, no, I forgot to get off. That's phone. okay. I just don't want to leave anybody out. Well, I, I loved seeing this information today and I appreciate um, your time, Chris and Margaret, especially because I remember we're helping on the working group way back when, and at least personally, I was frustrated when the state's focus went toward enforcement only because I remember a lot of people's conversations that without education and awareness, focusing only on enforcement isn't going to be, help reach our goals enough. So I was, I'm really glad to see that you kept it on track and really brought this forward, especially so that other communities can use your resources for the graphics um, as opposed to having to come up with their own. And I feel like that was part of that goal was let's keep a central message so that everyone's not doing their own thing, which is fine too. But when you keep a central message in a region like this, I think it's more important to keep reminding people so that we all realize we need to see each other and keep everyone safe and, and really see that there's a, there's a person walking and a person on that bike. And there is a person in that car, but um, you know, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I, but I appreciate what you've done for the program and bringing it forward. And I will move on to item number seven. Are there any requests for future agenda items from the committee? Anyone? Earl Ratledge, go ahead. Uh, this really isn't, uh, this is to follow up on something. I watched the video from last uh, month's meeting when I wasn't here. And you had made a request uh, about information about stop as yield or yield as stop, stop as yield legislation, the Idaho stop that you referred to it. Yes. And I reached out to people in our organization and really wasn't able to find an expert. However, there was a group that was pushing this in California a couple of years ago. I do have their confirmation information. So I'll reach out to them and see if they have information that they would share with us. That's great. Thank you. And then just please keep um, K updated so that it, as that item takes shape, that can give us additional people or information to include. Okay. Thank you. Are there any others, um, follow-ups or new future items to add from any members? Looks like we don't have any others. If you do think of any, please reach out to Kay through email or give her a call. 
Next item number eight, are there any updates or announcements by committee members? I'll give Scott Stales. Um, not sure how many of you follow micromobility, but uh, Lime recently launched in Scottsdale with e-bikes. And um, at this time, they're not deploying their scooters, but they are going to require their users to finish rides and lock up at bike racks. That's not a city requirement, but we're interested in evaluating how that works over time. And Bird is planning to launch their own e-bikes in Scottsdale by the end of this week. And they are not planning to require their users to lock at um, bike racks. So we will also evaluate how that works over time. I'm really interested in seeing differences in ridership between the shared e-bikes as well as the scooters. I, you know, I, I want people to be able to use what they want, but I want both to be available. So see me with any questions. And also remind people that Valley Bike Month planning is going on. Um, I ran into Suzanne Day from Valley Metro yesterday, and she reminded me that they have a new bike commuting guide that will be available soon. And she'll probably be reaching out to everyone to remind you if you're doing Bike Month activities to send your information to her so that um, the Valley Metro can share it in their online resources and their, if they're going to have printed materials. So I hope everyone's planning something for bike month because it's not that far away. Are there any other updates from anyone or any other announcements, new projects, anything like that? Maybe next month then. All right, this is a reminder to committee members that our next meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, November 16th. 2022 at one o'clock PM through teleconference. And with that, I will close, or do, I always forget, Kay, do we do a motion to close, uh, to um, adjourn or do we just adjourn? We just adjourn. Chair. Okay. With that, we will adjourn and I appreciate everyone's time and hope you have a great day. Thank you.